Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria. It is good to see you all. Believe you me, it is good to finally be back posting videos again on YouTube. Um, yes, we are back and hopefully we are here to stay this time. In this video, we are going to be going through the rights of drug administration. In my most recent vlog that I post prior to this one, or sorry, in my most recent day in life that I post previously this, to this one, I mentioned, you know, drug, um, the rights of drug administration, drug errors and all that stuff, but I went through it very quickly for the sake of not making that day in life of a nurse too long and i said that i would come back and talk about the 10 rights or a handful of rights of drug administration in more detail so that is what we are going to do in this video i'm going to elaborate on each point and i do expect all of you guys to use this in your nursing practice whether you're a resident nurse whether you're a student nurse whether you're a nurse who's been out of practice and is hoping to come back use this in your nursing practice so the first right of um, drug administration is the right patient make sure you have the right patient especially when it's a patient that you've never met before and the easiest way to do this is to ask the patient to confirm their full name and their date of birth some patients who have even been in hospital several times or who have been in hospital for a long time some of them even know their hospital number or their nhs number but make sure you confirm their full name and date of birth and i know sometimes for some people it may be a bit tedious especially when you worked with this patient for several days you've given medication in the morning you've done the afternoon meds and now you're given the evening meds and you're thinking oh I already know this patient, there's no point, but guys, still, you could have given medication to this patient 10 times before, always confirm their full name and date of birth, because not only is it good for you and assuring that you have the right patient, it also instills confidence in the patient to know that regardless of how many times this nurse has met me, she's going to do the right thing on every occasion. The second right of drug administration is making sure you have the right drug. There are a lot of drugs that have very similar sounding names, especially when it comes to antibiotics that are kind of like penicillin based. Don't get too familiar. Don't get over familiar where you're like, oh yeah, I've done this before. Oh yeah, I know this. Oh yeah, saline always comes in a blue bottle. And then just assume that it's always going to be in a blue bottle. No, because it could be lidocaine. It could be heparin. It could be magnesium. Make Make sure you always fully look at the bottle or the container that the drug is in and also make sure you're always checking the expiry date especially when it's patient's own medication i find that when it's patient's own medication and i check the expiry date i'm more likely to come across medication that has expired in comparison to when it's medicine or medication that i'm taking from the hospital's own stock the next right of drug administration is to make sure you have the right dose of the drug a doctor could prescribe 50 grams of paracetamol for a patient make sure you have the right dose and some of you guys who are kind of on it who have the experience will know that a doctor would never prescribe 50 grams of paracetamol so as long as well as you're making sure that the dose you have matches the dose of the prescription make sure that the dose of that particular drug is appropriate for that drug you know i know in my practice that if a patient weighs under 50 kilograms then a gram of paracetamol may no longer be appropriate for them you can see how other parts of your nursing practice and knowing the patient comes into play and also making sure you do the correct drug calculations luckily because the culture of like like nursing and the culture of work where I work is really good if it's like a really um, complex or if it's like a random IV medication that we've never heard of chances are there'll be at least you know three four nurses kind of looking around and making sure that you know you've prepared the IV drug right that you've given the right dose that the calculation is right the fourth right of drug administration is making sure you administer the medication at the right time if the prescription chart says prescribe the drug at nine o'clock the prescriber at nine o'clock obviously you'll use your own kind of not nursing intuition your own nursing judgment to decide whether it's the right thing or not the right thing to do be aware of some medication that needs to be given two hours after food um, some medication needs to be taken with water some medication needs to be taken on an empty stomach but if you know the medication has been prescribed at nine but the breakfast trolley comes at 8 30 and your patient's already eaten but this drug needs to be given two hours after food then you know maybe given at that time isn't the best thing to do and you may want to take that up with the medical team or the nursing team or whoever's prescribed um that medication another thing i want to add when it comes to right time is also looking at the intervals because you know situations do occur when you know a patient might be prescribed a drug at 10 o'clock unfortunately you or the nurse before may have only given the patient the drug at 12 o'clock meaning that when it's time for their next dose the gap is too small this tends to be the case with medications like paracetamol ibuprofen and even antibiotics when you look at like the therapeutic window of like medications and the half-life 
that it may not be a safe thing to do so depending on where you work i know that the patients that i work with they have a lot of um interventions a lot of procedures a lot of tests going on like literally the whole entire day and some of the tests are quite invasive and sometimes it means that certain medication that they would normally have is no longer appropriate sometimes i'm like why can't it be a one-size-fits-all but it isn't a one-size-fits-all i could have patient a having this intervention meaning that the certain drug they normally take at 10 o'clock is no longer appropriate like do not give the patient that drug and i could have patient b who's having the exact same intervention and then it's okay for them you know patients are so different so never adopt a one size fits all when it comes to the right timing of medication and when it comes to all the other rights that i'm going to share with you guys in this video the next right of drug administration the fifth right is the right route i had to kind of think about that is the right route making sure that the route is appropriate for the uh, medication that's going to be administered to the patient um you don't want to be that person person who i remember i heard a story I, I, i'm not even going to share the story forget it i'm not even going to share the story when i think of the right route another thing that comes to mind in relation to my practice is making sure that the patient has enough iv access i know that with um, a lot of my patients if they're prescribed a particular type of drug even though the drug has been prescribed intravenously and they have an iv line in so for some certain drugs i always make sure that they have a second iv line in just because that particular drug can be quite high risk especially when it comes to i don't want to say the name of the drug because i don't want people to start thinking that i'm giving them like medical advice and nursing advice that you know do you know what i mean like i i've got to be a bit cautious with what i say on the internet and stuff like that but yeah making sure the patient has the right route and making sure that they have enough iv access i would like to add to that right of drug administration the next right of drug administration is the right to refuse and this does not only apply to the patient it also applies to you as a nurse when i say right to refuse i also want to add the right to query as well it's not that your point like never gonna ooh. It's not that you're point blank not giving that drug to the patient, but being comfortable enough to go to the prescriber, to go to a medical team and say, I'm not too sure about this, the time, the dose, the route or whatever. Can you kind of explain why it's been prescribed in this way? And when it comes to the patient as well, a lot of the patients that I work with, they are very independent. They know so much about their condition. Late last week or early this week, I had a patient say, no, I'm not going to take it. And the simple reason why I wasn't going to take it is because the medication had been discontinued a long time ago. But obviously the news hadn't got to the um, medical doctor he was working with in a hospital now. So it's, it might not even be a case of the patient's just being difficult. They don't want to take it because whatever, whatever. When a patient refuses a drug, don't just put refused, blah, 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 blah kind of seek to understand why the patient's refusing a drug because nine times out of ten it is reasonable or it is something that you and the medical team can kind of work with and adjust and alter in a sense the next right of drug administration is the right knowledge and what i mean by that is just having a basic understanding of how the drug works what the intended um, benefits are, is knowing how to mix a drug. For example, if it's like an IV medication, if you're gonna be giving a very high dose of insulin to a patient, or if a patient is newly been prescribed insulin, then you may wanna check their blood sugars more often. You wanna have the right information about how to go about other nursing interventions that you need to do alongside that. So that's what I mean, or that's what is meant when we are talking about the right knowledge. The patient may even ask you, oh, why has this been increased or why has this dose been decreased? It doesn't even have to be in relation to that particular drug. A lot of the time it's in relation to the, the patient's specific condition, you know, because frequently when patients come to hospital, a lot of the time their medication is changed. It may not be completely scrapped. New ones aren't always introduced, but the dose could be increased. The dose could be decreased and the patient might ask you, why is why has this been decreased? Why has it been increased? So don't look at the rights of drug administration as an independent thing. It's all part of everything we are doing for and with our patients as part of the multidisciplinary team. So yes. <laughs> the next right of drug administration is the right question. And this ties in with the previous points of right knowledge and um, right to refuse. Making sure you're asking the right questions about the, um, the drug um, prescription if it's not a question that you're aware of same with your patients if your patients ask you any questions you may you yourself may not be able to answer it but you've got the physiotherapist you've got the medical team you've got the nurse in charge you've got so many other people around you who will be able to ask you who will be able to answer your question so even looking in the um, medication packet all the medications when you open it up there's like a little leaflet and it's got a whole bunch of things there have a quick read of it if it's a drug you've never 
come across before if it's a drug that you're quite unfamiliar with it will provide you with a lot of information the next right of drug administration is having the right advice and that is you and other members of the team being able to give the patient the right advice when it comes to this medication when it comes to medication like warfarin you know when you're on warfarin long term or when you're on warfarin period there are some foods that you should and should not be taken in high amounts just kind of stuff like that and when i think of that i also think of like the pharmacist they're amazing when it comes to advice about medication the next right of drug administration is the right response and in order to kind of have or to measure the right response you kind of need to know what the right response is at the most basic level again i'll always use paracetamol because it's something everybody's familiar with regardless of where you work if the patient's been given paracetamol to help reduce pain then make sure you go back to the patient and ask them are you still in pain or do you think the paracetamol has helped um laxatives are we actually monitoring their stools are we actually monitoring their bowels are the laxatives effective is it not effective you know just stuff like that right outcome make sure you're measuring the outcome it could be a case of asking the patient a question in relation to that drug or it could be a case of you know taking the patient's blood pressure just you know just general things like that and the final right of drug administration is the right documentation i remember one of my mentors would always say she'd always say maria if you haven't documented it it hasn't happened and i do agree to i do agree with that to a certain extent but making sure you're always documenting everything if the patient has taken a drug click that they've taken a drug if the patient has refused a drug tick that they've refused a drug and give a reason if a patient's drug has been postponed for whatever reason make sure you document everything i hope you guys have enjoyed that video um i've just gone through the rights of drug administration i do want to quickly reference i want to reference edwards and acts 2015 because a lot of the rights of drug administration and irrational i got from them and some of them were obviously also from my own nursing practice and other sources that i can't remember off the top of my head but if you found this video helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in my next video bye